Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Twitch Podcast. This is your host Oriel. Today we're going to be talking about stash busting spring. Let's get into it. Before we begin, I wanted to show off this like really cool like original piece of artwork that I purchased. This is by Yuri Bobrikov um, and I found him in Union Square in New York and I bought this immediately. I think it cost me like 35 bucks. It's a like really really cool hand painted you can kind of like see the I don't know if this is like impasto or <laughs> if there's a different word to describe like the physical texture of the product um on the canvas but I thought this was really really sick I'm looking to go get them framed today I have quite a few pieces that I need frames for I have prints um this is my only like original piece but yeah I have my first original piece of artwork I feel like this is no I have a few I have a handful of original pieces um but they're smaller because they tend to be pricier but yeah it's this kind of thing that I frequently find difficult because I need to like get frames for them like this one is another one I have of course like those two pieces from Veronica um that I am just sitting on so yeah my bedroom and this office area filled with prints that I need to get framed but yeah that's yet another thing that I need to do during my spring cleaning sessions today I wanted to do a little bit of brainstorming slash putting good vibes into the universe asking for feedback that kind of thing if anyone is out there I watched Nora. Nornitz, aka Nornitz. She did a video podcast recently, uh, one talking about like ideal spring patterns that she may or may not use for stash busting. And then she, in her most recent regular podcast update, mentioned that she's going to host her first official knit along. Um, I feel a, a, like a kinship with Nora that I can't really explain. Uh, she said that she started just over a year ago. And so she's kind of like my knitting big sister in my head. Like in my head, we have like a parasocial relationship where she's my knitting big sister. I feel like a year is enough time that I can conceive of where she is, where I am now. Like a year from now is something that I can kind of imagine. Um, and yet I feel like her skills are so robust and so well developed already that I'm just really continuously finding myself being inspired and like in awe, like, you know, whenever I feel like things are going too slowly or I don't really understand what I'm doing, I think about how she's really able to push through a lot of her barriers. And in her first year of knitting, she was not a very shy knitter at all. Like she just kind of went for it. So if you don't watch Nora already, I highly implore you to check her out. But she recently um, started this challenge called like scrap busting, stash busting, scrap busting, one of them, <laughs> spring. Uh, and the premise is that you're not going to buy new yarn. You are going to actually just use the yarn that you have, you know, in your stash. And she said you can thrift yarn, um, but ideally you would like go through stuff that you already have. Uh, you can buy yarn to supplement for a project if you need to, but we're trying to do some spring cleaning and take some inventory afterwards. And that was just an incredible, uh, I guess like stroke of timing because I myself am gonna move in like one or two quarters. I'm not really sure what the timing is gonna be, but somewhere between early and late summer, we're looking to move apartments. Um, and I just find that it'll be a good like impetus to like kind of get as much yarn product out and into projects as possible uh, and if there's stuff that is left over that I'm like still not using won't use blah 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 like we can look into actually getting rid of that product afterwards so I thought we might do a little bit of brainstorming in terms of patterns that I'm looking at they're kind of like on a short list and I will also show you b-roll of all the yarn that I am thinking of using for these projects just to make it easier I think I am going to do just like clips inserts uh because <laughs> to find all that yarn right here and then like put it back where it needs to be is just like the kind of executive function that I don't have um but let's get into it uh the first thing are patterns that I already own um, so I'll indicate whether or not I have them or not, but I'm going to try to organize them. The first thing on my list is the Look at My Holes by James and Watts. I'm having like a James Watts phase. I always kind of knew um, what he was about. He's been on my radar in terms of like showing up on my Instagram feed. I think he's just the kind of like artsy aesthetic uh, knitwear designer that kind of rolls up <laughs> in my world. Uh, and I really like the way that his products tend to feature Noro yarn. And so this is not one of those projects, but that is kind of how he got on my radar. So like through Instagram, through the fact that I'm always searching up like Noro yarn patterns. Um, yeah, Look at My Holes is a cute kind of like half sleeve mesh t-shirt. Uh, and I think Jesse May Designs has a tank top to go with it that you can wear underneath. But because it's a very short yardage project um, and it looks like the weight is pretty flexible. I mean, it is a mesh top. So I mean, how particular can it get? I don't know. Like I imagine that it, it's like relatively flexible. I have quite a few different yarns I'm thinking I could use, but I don't 
I have a few stipulations. One is that I don't necessarily want it to be super variegated, um, so I don't want like a self-striping yarn, um, and I also want it to be like somewhat fabric appropriate, which is kind of confusing because this top is neither something you can wear for warmth nor coverage. This is really just like a decorative piece. So I think a lot of the oomph is already in the design because it has such an open mesh kind of layer. I really can only imagine myself wearing it over like like a bralette or a sports bra, like something kind of loosey and airy the way you'd see it in photos. Or I could also see myself wearing like a quite modest full length, kind of like what I'm wearing underneath this, like a full length long sleeve shirt and then wearing on top as just like a cool layering accent piece. But again, it's not gonna provide any warmth. Um, so even though I have quite a lot of scrap or stash wool, I'm not sure how practical it'll be. My first choice is Noro Silk Garden. I think I have some with me, but again, I can't find it right now, but I have three balls of this Noro Silk Garden that I purchased for my birthday. It was on sale. I think it was around like 15 or 20% off. So I snapped it up and I bought all three balls that were left. Now each ball only has a hundred yards. So if I do it, in my recommended size, the way that he shows it, it's kind of like a closer fitted garment. Um, I think I will just make it with the orders that I have. However, I was talking with a friend and I thought maybe it might be cuter as like an oversized mesh sweater. I think it also looks a little bit less salacious when the fit is um, like not as form fitting. I kind of have the body type where even like modest clothing tends to look pretty, I don't want to say like like, I just have a, a body type that tends to be objectified. Uh, the kind of, like, silhouettes that I wear don't always look super wearable on me because they tend to look a little bit more inappropriate in the workplace. That's just kind of a conversation around bodies and body shame and all that stuff that I don't want to get into today. But I think, generally, if something has a more daring cut or a daring design piece, I, tie, I try to find other ways to tone it down so I can wear it in more flexible ways. Like, obviously, a fun, sexy shirt is, like, amazing, and I'm probably going to make one later down the line that's a little bit less functionally minded and a little bit more style minded but yeah I'm I'm kind of lost so the one option that I have is the Noro Silk Garden in the fitted and that's going to be a little bit more like sexy fun like hot girl summer another option I could do is just make it in like a fisherman's wool brown uh, I have a full ball of fisherman's wool left I used it for my Burgos vest and the bindings and the ribbing and all that stuff right so uh, I probably used like a small ball of it I had pulled apart a small ball and wound it up and I used up the whole thing and now I have none left. So I'm thinking, you know, I have probably 400, 500 yards of it left. Uh, I could probably do it in just like a solid brown and that might be something that's a little bit more wearable, a little bit more everyday. You can throw it on top of like a, a sundress or something like that. Um, but for now, I'm still kind of sitting on it. The other option that I have is the Noro Viola I own in a purple color. And I like this one as an idea because it's colorful. Um, it's a color that I really enjoy, which is that like purple color. It can go with a light um, base and it can also go over like a black and kind of look flexible either way. Um, so it's neither too sweet nor too edgy in terms of the color palette. And I also find that because it's slightly variegated but not fully like stripey, uh, I think it'll work really well with the mesh pattern. We've got three contestants for the yarn, I guess. So, you know, if you have a a strong opinion either way, definitely let me know. Uh, a product that I just started swatching for today is the Palmier sweater sleeves. Palm Palmier, I actually have no clue. I'm assuming it's Palmier. They're like the cookies that are, I don't know, they almost look heart-shaped. They're really, really cute. But this is a sweater sleeve kind of bolero thing, almost really similar to what I'm wearing today. This is a commercially purchased version of one of these sleeve bolero cardigans that I am a huge fan of, but I wanted to get one in a size and shape that I thought I would like. So I purchased this kind of like heavier woolen version, and then I also have a light summer version that's a little bit breezier. And I imagine this kind of thing to be one of my favorite garments because I tend to hate vests because they just keep your core warm, um, but they kind of like leave your arms out, which is like the least useful thing for me. Like I tend to want my arms cozy and my torso can tend to overheat. So I always found it surprising that this only became a trend recently. Like I know boleros were a thing, but this kind of like long sleeve shrug situation, as far as like I've been alive, hasn't been trendy until recently. So I'm really enjoying the trend. I know it was really big like a year, two years ago, and part of me is worried that if I start knitting them this year and I make two, by the time we get to next year and the year after that, it's kind of not going to be like a practical garment anymore, or I'm going to look too old to wear it or something like that, because it kind of reads very Gen Z um, and very young. 
you know, the jury's still out on whether this will be a good long-term decision, but in terms of busting my stash, my stash yarn, I have two yarns that I am looking to create uh, this pattern with. One is a slightly summery version. This is the Noro Tsumame version, and it is, I kind of think it's like a DK weight. There's no real description, you know, on the, on the card or anything, but it does say I use a 3.5 or a 4.0 millimeter needle, and I think from what I can tell, it's going to be a really great summer fabric. I believe it's 50% silk, 30% wool, and 20% polyamide, but I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's something like a 50 and then half and half. Um, so I'm really pleased with the contents. I think it'll be wonderful for transitional kind of spring uh, in office, out of office, kind of around weather just because of the contents. And it's a color combination that I don't usually like. I find with Noro yarn, the photos, for whatever reason, are never, never, never true to what you think they would be. Um, I have no clue why that is. And also I find that a lot of stores don't take new photos of their Noro yarn. They just use like the stock images. And I don't know if that's like a, a policy that Noro has put in place as a brand. I don't know if it's because they're trying to control like the photographing of the yarns, but most of the photos that I've ever seen of Noro yarn never come out the same. Granted, I don't really care. Uh, like not that I don't care, but I'm almost always happy with my purchase anyway. I have purchased quite a few different Noro yarns over the last like few months that I've been knitting. Um, I've probably tried like five or six different yarns and different colorways and I've liked all of the products that I've made, even though sometimes they're not what I expect. Um, this is one of those versions. I got it for my birthday and it's been sitting, you know, in my pile for months because I didn't know what to do with it. But I, I kind of felt like the color was a little bit shocking. Um, but now I finally feel like this project might be fun. I think it'll be nice to wear with like a simple black dress underneath. Um, I have like a few maxi dresses that I wear to work. Uh, and just generally, I think it could be quite a nice way to add color into my wardrobe without it being uh, like too big of a block. I think because it's just a sleeve garment, it'll be quite nice. I think for this one, I'm imagining the bell sleeve version. And then the second version that I have will be the Noro Kurion. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's the worsted weight version. And I have it again in a colorway that I didn't expect. It is a purple and brown colorway and green. Uh, purple, green, and brown. It's like a very earthy kind of almost whimsicoth vibe. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to go for for there. Again, uh, colorway seemed a lot more vibrant online and a little bit different, but in person it looks a little bit, again, earthier, muddier probably more wearable for that reason and there actually is a unif cardigan that is in a similar colorway so i'm not too mad about what it is uh it is just like wildly different from what it, it looked like uh but that's another version i think that one i might do like a puff sleeve version similar to this piece so yeah those are the two palmier sleeves and again i don't anticipate being able to finish all of this by the end of june which i think is when uh nora is officially closing her knit along from there, I have two more yarns that I'm going to assign to probably a James Watts pattern. This is the Beads of Joy pattern. I love the little, little ripples that are in there. Um, he recently released another pattern called the Pent Pillar Pullover, which is like also kind of a modular design. That's, I think, what he's known for. These beautiful undulating uh, kind of reverse ombre contrast patterns. I just feel like show off the neural yarn in such a way that is fresh and modern without being... Um, I don't know, like, too much for what it is. I think so much of what Noro is known for are how beautiful and kind of granular these changes are. And then with his kind of modern minimalistic lock uh, pieces, I just, I really like the way they come out. So I have two more yarns that I'm looking into for this one, and these are newer acquisitions. Um, one is the Noro Kurion in this kind of lilac nude brown combination. I think it's a really intriguing color combo. My only fear is that the yarn is technically a worsted weight, and I think this project calls for a DK weight. Um, I've seen people in the Ravelry notes talk about doing it with this yarn, but it seems like it's really tight. They might run out of yarn. Uh, you know, like people have had to do like contrast binding in different colors. I also am not going to be able to knit like a size one. Uh, I'm probably going to do like a bigger size. So I'm a little fearful that with the like just 500 yards I have, I'm not going to have enough. So my other option is the Noro Haruito Hojo, I think, is the colorway. It is this absolutely stunning spring colorway. I mean, like, it is so springy, so sweet. Um, I love the color changes. I think it's a really vibrant uh, combination of colors. I don't know how good it'll look on me in person. Like, again, I have no clue what this is actually going to turn out looking like. Um, but I do feel like Noro yarns are one of those things that are not always super flattering on you, but they're just, like, so fun and so vibrant and... Um, 
like dopamine inducing that I feel like I wouldn't necessarily mind and I love the little squiggles I think they're really fun again like the motif is just I think what brings it a little bit of freshness I find that some of the Noro magazine patterns I mean probably speak to some people because it's been such a long-standing publication for so many people in so many countries and like they're popular for a reason but I don't necessarily always gravitate towards those like almost like granny square like cardigans something about the fit is just a little bit I don't know I, I just like feel like it it doesn't seem as fresh um in design and I feel like James Watts is like my personal neuro catalog where I feel like everything he does is pretty fresh so I'm still between those two I'm not sure exactly what I want to do about that <laughs> speaking of being on a James Watts kick um another piece that I am looking into potentially making for the spring would be the color quadrant top now this is really really fun because you can pick any I believe four colorways but he also says that they're actually 13 different pieces you seam together so you could technically go up to like 13 pieces um, of contrasting yarns if you want to kind of have a whole scrap busting project but I like the way that this looks and there is a colorway that really speaks to my personal like color scheme preferences there's one um that has the same colors that I would use so I have this alpaca drops yarn that's in a bright true red I have this beautiful merino cobalt blue that was going to be a scarf that I just feel like I'm not going to make a scarf again it's already like 60 degrees outside we're not going to need a scarf until you know next fall there is um like a baby blue that I was going to use for my cardigan that didn't end up working out because the you know the colors again were kind of misrepresented online so I didn't feel like it was a good fit so I'm gonna have to find a use for that and I think that would work well um and I also have this kind of like dusty lilac color again didn't come out the color that I thought it was gonna be um so I'm gonna have to find a different use for that a lot of this was me ordering online and realizing the colors I see on the website and what I get in person are two different things and a lot of this is also me ordering yarn for projects that are far too late in the season that's another I guess newbie mistake that I've found myself making because again I have no concept of how long these projects take probably I will make all these things and then they'll be ready for fall <laughs> but it is what it is um I think that color combination would be really really cute to put together um in a top now the problem with this top is that or like the problem with this top is I don't know how much ease I would like to wear it with. It is described as a zero ease t-shirt. Um, I don't know. I find zero ease t-shirts, especially in like 100% wool um, with such a short sleeve, I don't know how practical that'll be for spring, summer, um, considering I'm going to have to wear another layer on top and then that other layer on top is going to be probably thinner than the t-shirt because the t-shirt is going to be <laughs> like worsted weight fabric. So I don't know. I'm thinking if I do this, I'm going to probably make it like an oversized raglan and actually just make the sleeves longer or at least like a half length sleeve um so I can wear it in like the fall without another like layer on top uh and then the other option is just mix it <laughs> and try something else and then something else for this color scheme and all these yarns I'm thinking of is a Stella quilt cushion by Laura Penrose this is a really popular one I'm surprised that there are only like a hundred projects on Ravelry I feel like I've heard every other podcaster on YouTube talk about it and perhaps those are all the people who posted it on Ravelry the Stella quilt cushion is another one of those modular uh like knit as you go however you want to like add the colors and you can do it I mocked it up a little bit like a drawing and it looked really bad and I don't know why because I really like this color scheme I like the blue and the pink and the lilac and the red I think there's something about all those cool colors contrasted with the bright red and maybe like an oatmeal in the back that works really well and I have a ton of oatmeal I have a ton of fisherman's wool I have some Patton's classic wool because I get that a lot for free at Michael's because of all like the rewards so in terms of like the actual kind of volume of yarn I'm imagining that it'll look cute in terms of what I'm like envisioning in my head and the mock-up that I got kind of is making me think twice like maybe the red is too strong visually I don't know I'm gonna have to play around with it and maybe do some swatches but I imagine some combination of those two whether it's the color quadrant top or whether it's a Stella quilt cushion will look cute in this color combo because it has to be cute I feel like it's cute when you look at the color scheme on its own it's very cute it's very dashing it's very cat kidson so I'm jury still out on what I'm gonna choose Okay, the other project that I want to stash bust, again, because I made a poor timing decision, is the Drops Bell that I purchased for my Winona dress. So the Winona dress is not here. It's here. I started this in, like, February, and it was a bad idea. Maybe I started it in January, but I started it, and this is an alpaca silk and summer fibers dress. So this is basically a midi-length sweater dress, which I think is a really cute idea, except for the fact that there's no reason for me to knit a midi length dress in also 
like a summer and a winter fiber together. I did it so I could hit gauge for the project, but in retrospect, I just feel like this was not very smart of me. And luckily I didn't do that much. I just knitted the top two kind of strappy parts and I'm probably just gonna maybe frog this later, maybe just leave it. However, I've decided to harvest this really, really beautiful drop spell that I never, you know, I, it's either I'm gonna make this sweater dress and it's gonna sit for half a year until I can wear it in the fall, or I like nix this project now, make something in a beautiful summer fiber, and then knit a sweater dress closer to a season when it's appropriate to knit a sweater dress. So I was thinking I could hold two drop spells together and make a ranunculus. This is kind of gonna be my first ranunculus. I really like this idea, not because I and particularly drawn to the ranunculus. Actually, Midori Hirose has a lot of projects that I like more than the ranunculus's design. I think part of the allure of her designs is that the photography and the editorials are so dreamy. Like she does a really, really f professional um, and phenomenal job modeling these pieces. I feel like it really looks like it's in a knitting book. She probably is like someone who's been published, but just the vibe and like the styling and the models and how they pose, it makes it look very uh, kind of aspirational and knowing that the ranunculus is one of the top uh, knitted garments of all time I feel like it's a knitter's rite of passage to make one and I figure you know god has given me all this drop spell that I don't know what to do with and the ranunculus is such a flexible uh, kind of gauge project I think you can pretty much make it in any gauge depending on you know what kind of drape and looseiness you want I think it'll be nice to hold this double um, and the reason why I want to hold it double is because I just have A, so much of it, and B, I'm not remotely interested in knitting with like a really, really thin yarn at all. Even in the summertime, you know, even as someone who, you know, like doesn't like heat, I don't really wear tank tops in the summer. I don't really wear, yeah, I just, I tend to keep my arms covered. I just wear lighter layers. So I'm hoping that the linen viscose cotton blend will be really good for the ranunculus, and I will finally be able to do it. Now, since I have took the plunge to read charts. I feel a little bit more prepared for that. And I feel like there's a lot of pattern support for the ranunculus. A lot of people have made it, you know, it just seems to be like a really great pattern. So I'm excited for that. That is very, very likely to be made. I think A, because it's something that I'm excited for and I have like a conception of and B, because I have all of the yarn already. I know that the yardage will work and I know that the gauge will work. I think gauge is often the thing that really messes me up because I'll have a project of mine, I'll buy the yarn, I'll do a swatch, and like no matter what, the gauge ends up looking a little bit different from how I want it or like the yarn length or whatever ends up being different and I'm so tired of that. So I'm glad I have like a ridiculous quantity of this drop spell. I'm glad that the ranunculus is really flexible in the gauge count um, and I'm glad that it has a lot of pattern support. So all of that points to it probably happening this year. Um, speaking of something that I think will probably happen this year is the Rhoda sleeveless top. This is an Irene Lynn pattern. I don't believe it's new because I've seen also the pullover version, but I'm not sure exactly which one came first. However, I'm really intrigued by vests. I made my first ever garment, it was a vest. It is the Burgos vest, and I'm not a vest girly. I don't think it looks really good on me. <laughs> and again, in terms of like functionality, I find that like my arms are the things that I would rather cover over my torso. Uh, and also like covering my torso and leaving my arms out kind of is like the least traditionally flattering way for me to style my body type. So there's just like a lot of reasons why I'm glad I made a vest, but I don't know. I feel like as a styling piece, it's very cool. As like a self-image, like self-esteem thing, not as much. And then in terms of functionality, I don't personally love them that much. However, I don't know. There's something about this that looks really cool, really sick. And I have the perfect red yarn that I want to use for this. This is the Plymouth Yarns. Um, just simply, I think it's like a Peruvian worsted. And I really enjoy it. I think it's um, a nice, toothy, hearty wool. And this is one of those pieces that I feel like if I make for the spring, I can also wear in the fall. Red is a slightly trendy color that I also think would layer well. It's not necessarily super edgy or super girly, but I can do it either way. Like if I wear it over a like baby pink sundress, it can look really fun and almost like strawberry-like. But if I wear it over like a black, you know, edgier kind of piece, <laughs> what am I saying? I, I just feel like I can style it in a lot of different ways. It'll be flexible um, and Again, with patterns, I tend to be someone who knits them multiple times. So I could easily see myself knitting this one in the red, getting this scrap right out of the way, and then going back and using like a fisherman's wool in like a, a cream or an ivory, and then making it again in ivory, or making it again in one of my patterns, like classic grays. Um, just a lot of options here for this sleeveless top. And if I like the motif, um, I'm happy to make the pullover version, which I think also is like a great kind of transitional layering piece. Uh, one thing that I wanted to say about this pattern is that I heard that it's not charted at all. As a person, I think I find written instructions easier just because I don't love 
charts, uh, all the like repetitive icons tend to make me a little bit scared that I'm going to lose my spot. Um, but again, it could be a practice thing. Like I did just start reading charts for the first time. I, like I'm doing it, but I don't like it as much. I feel like when you have written instructions, there's like relief after each line and I'm like, okay, I don't have to like keep track of anything. Uh, but you know, maybe if I, I get more into it, I'll have a change of heart. But in any case, I felt the need to mention that there's no charts in this pattern. And I've heard some people complain that there are no charts. So if you are looking to stash buzz this spring, <laughs> even though this seems like a really, really lovely pattern, and I personally think the yardage will work out exactly for the amount of yarn that I have. Um, you may or may not have like a different opinion based on your preferences and how much yarn you have. But for me, I think this will be a really great idea. I could make up to two um, easily with the yarn that I already have in stash, and I'm sure, you know, I could make more if I don't, I don't mind stripes. But speaking of stripes, I have two stripe projects that I am hoping to make with an assortment of various scraps. The first one is the Stripe Hype series or sweater slash dress. Again, this is not exclusive to a springtime garment because obviously you can wear a long sleeve product any time of year. Uh, I am just a little worried that if I stash bust and I make this, it's gonna be like June or July by the time it's done. And then I really won't have anywhere to wear it until fall uh, in like late October or something like that. But yeah, obviously this is a really popular suite of patterns. This is from Veronica Lindbergh and she makes this sweater that has kind of these chunks um, and also a floor length, or I don't really remember what my length is, but it's a longer dress. Um, and I think this is really great for people who just have a lot of yarn that they need to use up. Again, I have like yarns, <laughs> right? Like I mentioned that there were plenty of like single or double skeins of yarn that I have that I'm sitting on and I don't know what to do with them. This is kind of like the last kind of garment on my list of spring stash cleaning things because I'll have to wait until all my scraps are over before I can use this. But of course, that's always an option. I don't really have a vision for what I would do. Uh, you know, I had thought of that color scheme that I really enjoyed, the pink, red, purple, blue one. Uh, but I don't actually know, you know, again, which pattern will end up working. And the last color combination I felt the need to mention is the alpaca silk um, and the kid mohair kind of two strands of flowy, flowy something combo. Now I thought about maybe the Papa's pullover and I also recently thought about the puff sleeve knitting for olive pullover and perhaps the Laura Penrose souffle set. There's like bigger ones, heavier ones, lighter ones uh, and all kinds of versions of this. Um, any kind of like light blouse. I'm, you know, also imagining something like the cumulus blouse or like the blouse number one. But the problem with those is yardage. And I think that is where I'm gonna be a little bit kind of playing yarn chicken, figuring out my actual tension and how much I can get away with. Personally, I find with these like really romantic mo uh, mohair, silky kind of drapey blouses, having a really, really loose gauge actually is pretty conducive to it looking good. I would rather it be like looser and drapier than like stiff. So I'm gonna see if I can stretch my yardage by kind of making it holier. Uh, so that way it's not a super tight knit sweater. There are versions of kind of the all mohair or all alpaca kind of floofy sweaters that I've seen um, that I definitely have on my list, but because they're so tightly knit and the gauge is a little bit like finer, uh, it doesn't really make for a great breathable summer or spring piece. So that's kind of the last thing I'm thinking of. Um, in terms of like errant ideas that I don't have like in particular um, patterns to assign for, one is that I have loose skeins of like boucle and really, really fluffy mohair, but like only one each. Um, and that's not super helpful. It's one of those things that I can probably work into a stripe here or there, or I can do like a contrast ribbing or a cuff or something. Um, and that's kind of frustrating. I have a handful of superwash yarns that are not like nylon reinforced. Um, but I don't necessarily love superwash unless it's for like a, a chore sweater or like a thing that I wear on the house. And even then, you know, I would need a huge quantity to make something practical. Uh, I'm thinking of maybe making blankets. So like maybe do this Della Quill cushion, but in a blanket format where you just kind of stitch together nine big flying geese, you know, or Ohio stars. But you know, that also feels like, I don't want to say uninspired, but I'd have to have enough colors of the yarn that it kind of would work, would work out and I don't, I would need to have enough colors of these scrap yarns to repeat it enough times that it would work out as a like blanket and I don't know if there is enough yardage for that either. But in any case, I thought this would be a fun little showcase of at least the patterns that I'm looking at these days. Um, perhaps it'll be fun to go back at the end of the year and see exactly what I, I did end up doing or maybe I'll update, you know, at the end of stash, bus stash busting spring while that is 
a remarkable list of consonants to get out of your mouth at once. But in any case, I was thinking <laughs> that I could check in at the end of Stash Bust Spring and show you what I did end up making. So this is the official start. Um, yeah, the goal is to get rid of as much yarn from now until when I move in the end of the springtime slash start of summertime. Um, because I have a lot of yarn. Um, it is a lot of like kind of useless quantities of yarn because I made mistakes. And, you know, even when you think you fix your problem, which is the problem that I had last time was that I was buying two balls of yarn and you think you fix it. So this time I bought yarn according to pattern, but then the patterns ended up not working out and the yarns that were displayed online didn't end up looking, you know, accurate in real life. And then sometimes I have gauge issues. All of those things kind of make it so I feel like every time I feel like I have a little grasp on how to like make fewer mistakes in knitting, I just, I don't. Um, there's yet another thing that I haven't considered and then I'm back at square one again. So I have these like piles and piles of yarn in my office that I would like to knit up, thought I had good plans for, don't have good plans for, and hopefully this is just useful. Um, let me know if you're participating in Sash of Spring. I think that'll be really fun. Yeah, ideally you see some of these projects on the needles sometime soon. And with that being said, I think we're all set. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye now.